Welcome back to another episode of Waverley Zoo, uh, episode uh, 9 I think, and as I discussed in the last episode, um, there's a bit of sort of backstagey stuff that I want to do next. So I've already started, so here we go, this, so this is our entrance here, uh, sort of the, the goods entrance, uh, which I'd previously built with the warehouse here and as you can see I've opened it up so this fence here this wooden fence used to come across here and that was it that was the end of the area so what I've decided is to extend this pathway or road to sort of a, you know a loading area car park call it what you want uh, all the way along here and so my, my idea is that this is a pathway for things like the jeeps lorries buggies whatever the zoo would be using to transport people or goods you know with pet foods and supplies and supplies to the cafeterias and restaurants and stuff like that um, around the zoo to have an entirely separate pathing system or road system going around uh, to link everywhere together that's the theory and so that's what I'm going to try and do so it was I had this area over here uh, which is the backstage for the restaurant here and here for the chimpanzees and before it came in here and it linked to this path here which was the public path uh, so now what I've done is create a bridge for the public and then the road connects underneath and then you just got this side path here um, for the actual staff to come in and connect between the two uh, now obviously I know in the game it means that people would come along here and potentially do this walk along the wrong bit but I'm not planning on letting people into the zoo so for the sake of realism I want everything to be connected in a realistic way um, so obviously if I open the zoo at any point it will be a bit chaotic because you'll get people walking all over these areas probably that I don't want them on but uh, I'm not planning on doing that so that's uh, that's not too much of an issue um, I've changed the textures at the moment I'm still not sure what texture I'll go with for the road in the end um, but I probably won't have them the same as the pathway for the public so I'll probably continue this black tarmac for the backstage pathway uh, or road because it looks more like a road the tarmac let's be honest that looks more like a road and this looks more like a public pathway so that's where I am so far I'm actually not happy with this bridge I don't it's too steep for a start um, and the other problem I've got that has only just occurred to me is uh, I, that obviously I'm trying to keep it realistic and I'm trying to make sure it's uh, wheelchair accessible and obviously a bridge is not good for wheelchairs so what I'm actually thinking is I may have to do these the other way round and keep the public path as the flat path and then have the roadway going over the top now that presents a new problem because obviously I can't have a roadway steep like that if it's going to have buggies, lorries, vans, jeeps, whatever riding on it, it's going to have to be a slow, gradual slope to get over um, on a bridge of some sort. So I'm going to rethink this and see what I can come up with. Um, but that's the idea. And then in this area here, I'm, I've realised that I, I don't actually have a quarantine in the zoo yet. And I know I don't really need it because I'm not playing the game properly. Um, but I, I, it did make me think that a nice backstage building in here for um, animal quarantine, uh, for the veterinary areas, and maybe a bit of uh, sort of science and research as well would make sense in this area here, um, because it would have access, obviously, to the outside world here for deliveries and things. So any animals actually coming into the zoo would be brought in this gate here, uh, and then come into this building here for quarantine. And obviously any animals in the zoo that were ill would be brought here so they would be accessible on the other side as well um, so that's what I'm going to do next uh, so I need to do the building I need to sort this bridge out um, and obviously the road will eventually continue off up around here um, 
I'll see how much I get done in this episode. I've got a few ideas. It, it's, a, it's a big project because this is eventually it's going to come all the way up here, link up to the reptile house here and around the back to the penguins. And then obviously as the zoo also gets extended out, I will branch it off uh, and make sure it's connected everywhere. Um, but for now, it is, it's, it's just going to sort of snake around these main areas that I've already done. Um, so let's just see how much I get done, uh, whether it's uh, all in this episode or if I sort of blend it into my next projects. Um, we shall wait and see. Uh, so I'm going to go away and do a bit more. Okay, so I've come up with something a bit different here. Um, so as you remember, there was a bridge here and this road was connecting under here. Um, so I got rid of the bridge, I've kept the public path flat and I've put this ramp in leading to a bridge and coming back down on the other side. It is quite grand and quite over the top, but it's realistic. It is exactly the sort of thing they would do. I mean, yes, I dare say in the real world they may actually just have the, the road crossing over the public pathway. Um, but actually for this, for the sake of this zoo, I, I want to do this kind of thing. It, it, it adds structure to the zoo, it adds height to the zoo, and it just gives me something a bit more interesting to work on. Um, so this is, this is what I've come up with. Uh, and I've put this sort of bone, a uh, bone, what am I talking about? Stone structure along the side here. This is uh, made up, obviously it's just segments like this, and it's all these, um, these faux rock pieces. Just a whole load of those uh, tilted at the right angle um, and, and then just continued all the way around. And it looks really nice because th this is the sort of thing that um, that they use here. What they do, they certainly in this country, they they build these structures, obviously make them strong and stable. And then at the edge here, they, they make it out of um, concrete and then they just chuck stones onto it and it dries and sets into a nice solid wall and i think it looks really nice actually so i'm very pleased with that coming along uh, the only problem i discovered is obviously these things are hollow and so where they poke up on the inside here they do look a bit silly so what i'm doing is just adding this top layer here with these other rocks um, so i'll continue that all the way along the tops of both sides here and here um, just so you don't get to see uh, this this nasty bit here and instead you get this nice solid rock um, and then over this side I've just added in this small pathway here for the staff because obviously there was no way of the staff getting to this backstage area now so I'll just put this path in and um, the staff can just nip through there and you know it just connects the two nicely so yeah that's uh, I I can't remember if I showed you this bit before, but I just um, just put in like a, a three-way road system here so that things can come and go in all different directions. And obviously the, the road will continue off that way soon. But for now, I'm just co uh, concentrating on this bit over here. Um, so let me continue that and uh, I'll get started on the building next as well. Uh, and then I'll be back to show you what I've done been having a bit of fun making my building here uh, so if you remember this is my quarantine uh, veterinary and sort of research building um, so it fits into this hole at the front here quite nicely it's it's nice that it's um, it's a bit of a, a sort of a long thin building it, it makes me um, come up with a few sort of quirky shapes to the building adds adds a bit of character to it I've gone with this um, this two different wall effect again I've, I've used this many times I think it's it is something that you see actually a, a lot in real life where they have a, a, a basic structure down the bottom and this is sort of the foundations of the building and but then they can use a different material for the top segment and you'll often see a, a third material at the top or this the other way around so you have a large segment at the bottom and then a thin strip at the top I think it's just a design thing mostly um, but obviously in this case you can see this is this is bricks so this is really nice and solid whereas these are uh, breeze blocks essentially which aren't as strong um, so you you wouldn't want these at the bottom because they're just not as strong as bricks um, but in in the case of, of what I've done I just like the look of it um, so yeah there we go now what I've done um, is raise the whole building up a bit 
instead of having these facilities you can see what I've done again I've just filled this up with all these facilities so that I get the nice proper looking windows and doors along the outside so we see the doors are the two buildings that I didn't actually have so there's a, a quarantine and what's this one actually this is a, a keeper hut I believe this one isn't it yeah keeper hut and is that quarantine yeah quarantine so that's the, the one building I didn't actually have in the zoo so at least now I do have one so I wanted a couple of them actually accessible by proper doors um, but I've raised it up again it just adds a bit more character to the building you know an extra dimension having these little stairways at the front it just uh, just makes things that little bit more interesting to look at rather than just having everything flat on the floor um, but I've also done um, that for is around this side because uh, of course this side is where the public are and you wouldn't want the public necessarily being able to see into all these windows and, and sp spy on uh, the goings on inside and so by raising the whole building up just uh, um, a couple of meters it means that the people walking down here can't see inside so that was sort of an extra reason for doing that um, I think it, I think that works quite nicely actually because it's clear that there's stuff going on but from down here and obviously there will be foliage along the front um, you wouldn't actually be able to be too nosy and really see up in there yet the people working inside obviously can see out so they're not having to have the windows closed or whatever um, and, um, yeah so yeah really like that um, so that's where I'm up to I haven't quite decided what I'm doing for the roof yet uh, this area at this end of the building I've left clear and the reason for that is that um, this is essentially uh, the warehousey part of the building so this is where I'll have a big door on this side and probably a, an identical one on the other side and so the idea is that this is where animals would come into the zoo so this is the entrance to the quarantine area and then inside here somewhere there'd, there'd be facilities for quarantining inside um, so I will get on and, and put some more detailing on next uh, I haven't finished off the ramp over here yet because uh, I, I had an idea for the building so I just wanted to crack on with that um, so that's where I'm up to so far so let me go away and um, do a bit more for you okay I've got quite a lot done now uh, the building is just about finished so let me talk you through it uh, as I said I put a large door here with a small door so my usual little thing big door small door switch and a light um, I, I like the look of it so I'm, I'm sticking with it uh, and I managed to extend the uh, the road inside as well so that it looks uh, good and then on the other side I've done the same configuration so obviously that's access out into the zoo or indeed in from the zoo if necessary straight into the quarantine area um, so let's go along this side as you can see I've kept the foliage really simple along here um, just a load of hydrangea bushes all the way along this side uh, got a big tree here as well lots and lots of hydrangeas um, you do see this a lot in zoos and I've, I've done the same on the other side here they foliage is generally not something that they want to spend hours on all the time uh, and obviously some zoos do have um, fairly extravagant gardens with them but generally they're concentrated in one area of the zoo they're not just along the sides of pathways um, so this is the sort of thing and then once a year all they have to do is come along and do the pruning and so that's what I've gone with on both sides here oh I forgot to put the path back in there I will have to remember to do that in a minute um, so yeah so this comes all the way along to here I haven't quite decided what's going on at the end here yet and I've done a good bit around the front here as well so again I've put in an access door here with a wheelchair ramp and that came out really nicely I really like the look of that again this it's tricky getting the slope correct um, just making it gentle enough uh, but this uh, this one worked out very nicely indeed so I'm really happy with that and I wanted an access here anyway even if it wasn't for wheelchairs a big building like this would would have multiple doors going in and out for health and safety reasons um, so that's uh, so that was going to be there anyway but I decided to use it as an opportunity to put in the ramp some foliage along the front here again keeping it simple basic shrubs I'll put some raised beds in here up against the building 
Uh, these are just made out of some simple wooden beams, a bit of soil underneath, and then again, hydrangea bushes in here. I did try and put some different things in. I put some sort of more exotic plants in, um, but they just they didn't look right, and they just I know they don't grow very well in England. Most of them they end up looking really tatty. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to stick with all the nice sort of native plants that I know grow well in this country. Um, so yeah, so hydrangea bush is all the way down there again. Obviously this is backstage, so the, none of this is being seen by the public. This is only being seen by sort of visitors to the zoo and the people that work in this building. Um, so they would keep it really simple, but obviously it is nice to have things a little bit colourful. Um, you know, you've got to keep your staff happy and, and I, I don't really know anyone who doesn't enjoy the sight of a nice flower. So, um, you know, this is exactly the sort of thing they would plant along here. Obviously a couple of trees in the gap at the end here and over here. And I've obviously just joined this fence up at the back here as well. And then down the front here, I thought this, this space needed more than just big empty space. Um, so you've got this main area is left empty because this is where the lorries and trucks and vans and things would come in They'd be turning around Loading off into these doors here potentially loading into the quarantine door here But I thought the staff would need some car parking space along here It's a shame that we only have one different car in the game. So in this zoo everyone is driving the same Jeep different colors at least um, But yeah, Jeep is the car of choice. Never mind. I'm not overly fussed about that. Um, so there we go, so that's the building. Oh, and the roof, of course. I, I, I hadn't done the roof before, so I, I went with a flat roof, um, simple concrete flatness, and and then just a wooden beam around the edge here, just to add an extra bit of dimension and a, a, a different color and texture as well. Uh, in fact, that was my girlfriend's idea to put the wooden beam around. So thanks to her for suggesting that because I think it worked very nicely. Uh, she just happened to pop in while I was building it and I asked her because I didn't like the look of it and she said oh why don't you just put a nice little bit of wood around the top or something so there we go so that's what I did and I'm really happy with it so thanks to her for that girlfriends can be helpful can't they and that's where I'm up to so I've still got this area to work out um, still obviously finishing off this ramp as well um, so I'm going to figure out what I'm doing in this bit finish off the ramp and then uh, may well continue um, a bit more up here. Oh, I want to also change the tarmac as well. I can't remember if I'd done that in the last episode, but all this is the black tarmac now, and all around the um, the exteriors of the the restaurant and the the, uh, the chimpanzees here is all back to the black tarmac again. Um, so this 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 access road for the uh, for the staff is all going to be tarmac. So it stands out from the the different road textures that I have used elsewhere. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with that building. I think that looks really nice Fits in nicely again. I went with the flat roof um, Functional buildings generally they don't need pointy roofs Pointy roofs are um, a bit showy therefore if you you know if you've got sort of loft space Buildings like this don't need that they're, so they are generally just built with flat roofs plus I don't want to ruin the views of things you know so when you're down here I want you to be able to see the tree lines and, and potentially the tops of other buildings. Um, so that's my thinking there. And, and I just think it differentiates the, um, the functional buildings from the more interesting um, show off buildings. Um, so that's what I'm going with. Um, and I'm, I'm happy with that. So there we go. So let me crack on a bit more over here and get back to you in a minute with what I've done. And here we are. This is what I've come up with uh, for this corner area here um, so I've, I've used the barrier uh, system to build this nice brick wall that comes all the way through here and just connects to the rock so from the other side over on the public pathway um, it's not too blocked off you can kind of tell that there's something going on back there but you can't directly see because of the wall um, left some of this overgrown I quite like this sort of a natural looking area here some long grass and some short grass few trees you know a little baby one here maybe a new one that's been replanted and some very nice established trees same again on this side just a few trees through here there were actually some more in here but I thinned it out because it was a bit too dark and I didn't want it to be too shady um, along this walkway here um, 
and then on this side just filled this gap in here with more of these hydrangea bushes and obviously you've got some lights in here as well some of these street lights um, which I think look good so the, the street lights continue all the way around the ramp uh, I finally got around to finishing off this um, this extra bit of rock work along the top of the ramp as you can see I think that looks very nice um, just looks really supportive all the way along there I continued the pathway just underneath and I put these um, these sort of support beams in underneath here uh, which I like the painted red because obviously they need to stand out so people don't hit the heads on them hopefully they wouldn't because they're high enough and far over to the side but these things are always painted red in England just to make them stand out uh, put a light under here as well just to shine that up a bit more at night and then again continue all the way around here with this rock all the way along the top so this ramp now comes all the way down here and yeah so there we go that's where I'm up to oh, I just realized there's a couple of bits there that I haven't covered up properly I need to sort that out don't I did I put that path back in with the toilet I can't remember yes I did so that that path there is now connected because there is actually a toilet in here even though you have to walk through a load of walls there we go so there is a toilet in there for people to actually use if I let people in the zoo at any point um, but for now I just wanted to make sure that looks connected which it is so now the people will come along here and they'll pass underneath this bridge and out the other side and I don't know what's going to be out here yet we shall see um, but what I'm also now going to do is make this path move a bit more along here and this one is going to come along here so I'm probably going to have to do another bridge over here um, so let me go away and uh, I think probably just I've got time for maybe one more visit um, in this video um, so let me go away and see how much I can get done I've managed to get a fair bit done actually um, so I've I brought this ramp up straight away over here um, so the, the public path from the back of the chimpanzees I, I brought through here and then connected it up here with another one of these little triangle systems onto this path but what it meant was to make this um, this access road slope gently enough I had to bring the slope all the way here and connect it right over here which is fine um, but it works you know so from over here um, this initial bit is a bit steep but it's it's fine you know trucks lorries vans jeeps buggies whatever could, could go up here quite easily um, and they'd work their way all the way along here da, 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 da. I'll explain this little piece in a minute and then a nice long gentle slope down this side and then another one of these little triangle systems so the road will go off in that direction and it does connect here as well so I'll need a gate on here um, and because what I realized is while I'm connecting with the backstage areas that I've done for uh, certainly the chimpanzees and then the reptiles and then eventually the penguins the bears that are in the middle here I can't really do that with because there are three individual ones but they're not accessible in any way other than this main ring path that goes all around here so if they wanted to get uh, to them with a van or whatever they would have to just use this to the nearest point which in this case is going to be here and then they would just have to drive on here and go to where they need to go uh, and the main reason for that is because this area in here is going to be water there's going to be a, a lake in here um, but yeah I'm, I'm fine with that it's you know it is what it is it's um, it, it, it lends uh, it lends itself to the, to um, to what it is that didn't make sense yeah just you know I'm happy with it it's fine uh, it forces me to come up with creative ways of designing um, when things go slightly wrong so I don't mind that at all uh, so I'm not sure what I'm doing sort of in these gaps and things yet however here this is going to be my next video and my next project um, oh yes I've also before I move on to that I've also just put this fence in here so this is a barrier a wooden barrier along here just put a few of these little animal um, pictures on here just uh, you know just something a bit more interesting than a blank wall and then I put a, a, a hedge uh, with the topiary pieces along the front and just doubled it up to sort of twice the height um, so it's nice and formal because uh, this is a, obviously a backstage area you've got the quarantine here um, for any chimpanzees that need looking after in any way 
so you'd want them to be secluded from the public uh, so you wouldn't want them to be able to see through here so that's what that fence has gone in for there um, obviously again just a few trees dotted in there uh, one thing I did do on this wall here you can see I've sunk some of the um, these panels of green into this wall just on this side um, which looks fantastic uh, these panels I th I've said so in previous episodes uh, of, of my other uh, zoo series these panels are my favorite piece in the game I think they have so much potential to be used in different ways and it makes this rock wall look incredibly natural even though it's obviously not um, and the reason I did that is because I do want to turn this area here into a habitat of some sort I don't know what animal will be in it yet um, but when I come up with the idea that is what's going to be in there and so I just wanted this wall to just look a little bit different that's all um, because this this whole area is fenced off basically so you've, you've got the natural fence coming all the way down here from the backstage area and then you've got the ramp on this side and this side and then on this side you've already got the barriers from the pathway and so I can put an animal in here and if it's the right animal I won't even have to build any b extra barriers at all um, so I don't know what's going to come in there but uh, it's going to be something cool I'm thinking I think there's I could be completely wrong but I'm sure there's kangaroos in the game is there kangaroos logically let's have a look under K for kangaroo no they're probably called something else though aren't they I know there's a kangaroo on the uh, oh yeah there we go red kangaroo so there we go maybe something like a kangaroo although actually a kangaroo might be able to jump over that I will have to see what sort of barrier they need oh yeah better than three meters okay maybe not a kangaroo <laughs> otherwise they're just gonna bounce out aren't they okay but anyway you get the idea there's gonna be something in here don't know what however my next project is going to be in here so it's only a small area but I didn't want to just leave it blank or stuff trees in there again um, I wanted uh, as you do get in all zoos is a lot of uh, restaurants and so I'm going to build a small restaurant in here with a small seating area at this end I think and so the reason I've done this small outcropping of pathway here is that that will be inside the building so the building will cut across it and there'll be a door and so that will be the backstage access uh, into the restaurant for deliveries so you know when they're delivering all their food to the restaurant they will drive along here stop here and dump stuff off into the backstage so that'll be like sort of an upstairs access uh, and then obviously the facilities themselves will be down here connected to this path and a picnic area or a seating area at this end here um, so yeah that's my thinking there so that's gonna be my next project but for now uh, I'm done with this video I'm really happy with all of this actually I, I love this this the road the look of it um, I, I love the structure that I'm managing to develop here with all these these paths and roads it really really looks the zoo makes the zoo look natural um, it, when it's not just small pathways and um, you know habitat after habitat after habitat which I've done in, in obviously in my previous zoo in Green Valley Zoo is very much just right there's a gap let's put a habitat in it and what I'm trying to do with this zoo is, is really make it more realistic and more spread out bigger structures bigger buildings bigger areas um, and so far I'm really pleased with how it's coming along so please let me know what you think um, whether you you like my new uh, building here and my my ideas for my uh, my interweaving roads uh, let me know in the comments if you have an opinion thank you so much for watching I'm really enjoying making this uh, series uh, I hope you're having as much fun with it as I am um, so until next time uh, stay safe take care of yourselves and thank you very much uh, so I will see you again very soon bye for now